What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Birdhouse. If you want to learn how to make trap beats like this, and like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Once again, welcome back to the Birdhouse. We're getting into a simple trap beat today. I'm gonna keep it nice and easy and then kind of show you how to take it to the next level. Basically with this melody, I started out with a simple D minor chord. I had this middle note in, it'd be a straight D minor triad. I just removed the middle note, made it a two note chord and built this progression out here where it just kind of steps up. Above uh, for the top melody, I'm utilizing these single note intervals at A sharp and A and at F and E kind of going up and down, just feeling it out, seeing what sounded good. That melody sounds like this. There's just a lot of tension building throughout it. That's a Keyscape Grand Piano. And right off the top, I have cut a bunch of the lows and highs out of it. And then it's running through a melody bus that I'll show you in a second that has a lot of effects on it. I also dropped some bass notes down at the bottom, following the same steps as here. D, D, the root note, up to E, up to F. So using that same single note interval again. For the second part of the melody, I just copied the same chord progression and put it over to an Omnisphere pad. This is the PD Choir Gothic in Omnisphere. And it's like they're automatically going to sit together. And you just kind of play with which one do you want louder, quieter. And then the third part of the melody, I just took the low bass notes and the top. And again, that's on an Omnisphere pad, absolute concentration. Just cut the mids, left the lows and highs. And again, playing them all together. In Analog Lab, I used a, a strings pad from the Producer Grind Sound Lab uh, PG Weekly pack that I just got. No sponsor or anything, just a dope pack. Totally recommend it. Uh, just use this with the top melody. So real subtle, but when we put it with everything, It's like dancing up on top of the melody. Real nice. And then for the bus, all the melody, again, you know, just going through some EQs. I'm real big on cutting out things I don't want and trying to carve out space, especially for secondary sounds to kind of have a, a place to live in the beat. On the melody bus, uh, I'm running everything through an SSL compressor. You know, never doing too much with that. I've got the vintage reverb that's pulled down to 35% halftime, down to 30%, cutting out some lows and highs with this band feature. I got Murder Melodies from Slate. Uh, this one I didn't use a preset. I've just put the spread up pretty high and then motion 36%. So, um, and then all of these usually have a mix knob, you know, I'm dropping that down 75% of what I'm giving it. Same thing with RC 20, you know, a lot of space, a lot of magnet, but then dropping that down 58%. And at the end of it all, another EQ, we can hear that with and without the effects. You know, now it's like it's sitting back a little bit so the artist can be in front of it. And it's like everywhere. It's floating in the background right behind where the artist is going to be dancing. And obviously we're going to have some drums hitting up front too. All right. Speaking of which, if we go to the drums, I started off with DY 808 Mafia drums. And what we're going to do is switch them out so you can use what you have on hand. Uh, let's hear these drums first. All right. 
right, and then let's just uh, let's make some changes. So I'm gonna go to this uh, producer grind drum sauce. Let's do volume two. Well, that one works for me. You'll see me. I know it. I I don't sit here listening to a kick for three hours, and I'm not gonna. If that's the problem on the beat, then the beat just probably sucks. All right, and then let's find a 808 or works for me. Let's see if it cut it just a little bit. All right, let's check these drums now. That's hard. All right, let's hear the whole beat with the drums. I don't like that little clicky hi hat. And then let's just spice those up a little bit. Cool. So kind of the last thing we could do to this to try to kick it up to the next level is consolidate this melody. Um, and then once it's consolidated, it's basically printed into audio and it gives us some more flexibility on how to work with that. If I just select by holding command and dragging across this whole melody, hit command G and it's going to lump them all together in one MIDI file that contains everything now. If I right click here in this column, and go consolidate tracks from song start. I'm gonna leave remainder in case there's any tail on the end. All looks good. And then consolidate that. It's gonna take a minute because it's running through the whole melody. All right. So that one took a minute. As you can see, we've consolidated the whole track here. So we now have an audio track. The MIDI is tucked away. That also means that on these tracks, I could come here and delete or turn off all these plugins. Most of these weren't causing too many problems, but here on the bus, definitely some ones that are using up CPU and draining a lot of CPU. Also, these VSTs that we were using. For instance, Analog Lab, which is like usually the biggest CPU user, we can turn all those off. None of those are being used anymore because we're now playing through recorded audio. The Birdhouse. I did forget to mention down here on the melody, I put in this automation clip for the halftime. So the halftime that's on the melody bus. I have it just kind of moving. There's parts where it drops out altogether, so you get more of the raw piano and less of the halftime. That's in there, that's printed now, so that also doesn't need to be uh, playing. The Birdhouse. And we're gonna hear it drop in with the new drums. Because we'd already arranged the beat, there's parts in here for the verses where parts of the melody drop out. So we've got all the dynamics that we created in the arrangement process. That's all still there. So one thing you can do with this now that it's MIDI, I double clicked on the waveform and then I'm right clicking down here and I'm going to open it in audio editor or edit in audio editor. And I'm going to use this convolution reverb. I've already kind of played with these settings. I've got it really low. It's on like 10 or 
Same thing with this one, the, which is called blur. Very low. You can watch the waveform change here. And then I'm going to right click on the sample rate and resample at a lower sample rate. Let's just drop it all the way down so you can hear the difference. But, uh, you know, you can use which one you think matches the track. And now we've put it in back up here. So we've got a now affected piece of audio. The bird house. Turned all the effects off, so I'm gonna run it back to five. So it's on the bus now. Maybe just turn on the EQ. And there we go. Into the verse. I just love feeling that energy move away. Like you just felt the rapper step into the room there. But then to keep that rapper going, there's never a point in the 12 bars where the beat stays the same. You know what I'm saying? There's always something cutting, dropping, popping back in with the drums, with the melody, something. I love cutting the 808 at the end of the verse. Like, let me feel the punchlines here. Let me really hear what you're working with. And then, like, right into the hook. Ah. Yeah. That's it, man. I hope, again, like, y'all were able to see something in this beat as far as how to take a simple chord progression, add in some top layers, take that same melody and put it on different pads, uh, you know, choirs, pianos, and, you know, just with some light mixing, kind of give each of those pieces of the melody their own place to sit and then add to that drums, you know, simple drums. Like I'm not doing anything extra. I'm not going crazy with the hi-hat patterns or pitching or anything. And all of a sudden you have that bounce and you have that space for a rapper to come in and do the rest of the work, you know, to, to finish out the song and make it what it's supposed to be. And then from there, kind of do some things with the audio to take it to the next level, give it that professional polish. If this was helpful to you at all, definitely let me know down in the comments. We did great with the first video. The channel's growing like crazy, so you know I'm super happy about that. Keep letting me know you showed up. Drop it in the comments, share it on Twitter, share it with your people, let people know on Instagram. The word of mouth helps me the most. And then keep tapping in. Every Monday I'll be here. You know, let's keep making beats together. Let's make some beautiful music together. Until then, I appreciate y'all coming by the birdhouse. The birdhouse. Let the beat carry you out. This one came out good. <laughs>